On February 20th, 2013, developer Kenji Eno passed away due to hypertension. While Mr. Eno wasn't exactly a well-known developer, what he lacked in popularity, he made up in being unique. After working for companies like EIM and Interlink, Kenji would branch out on his own and create his own studio, Warp. Kenji Eno wasn't exactly a man who would march to the beat of his own drum. Instead, he would actually take the drum and kick it out the window. Kenji was known for making the games that he wanted to do, as well as giving some public FUs to Sony. But right now, for this week's episode of Unboxed, we pay tribute to the man by looking at his Colt 95 Classic D. D was published worldwide by Acclaim and released on the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and 3DO. In 1997, Dr. Richter Harris, a director of the Los Angeles National Hospital, suddenly snaps and goes on a relentless killing spree. Known as a quiet and intellectual man confuses his daughter Laura as she's summoned by police to talk to her father as he barricades himself in the hospital with numerous hostages. Upon entering the building, Laura is swallowed by an interdimensional rift and finds herself in a castle, and despite being warned by an apparition of her father to leave, Laura enters the castle to unravel the truth of her father. D was groundbreaking when it was released in 1995, as it was the first game completely rendered in CGI. Now, think about that. 1995. What else was released in that year? You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Mm-hmm. Now, while Toy Story's graphics have aged pretty well, the same can't be said for D, whose graphics lie somewhere between Reboot and the original Mind's Eye. But, to be fair, while Toy Story used high-powered silicon graphic-based hardware, Kenji and Warp would only utilize three consumer-level Amiga computers. So, I definitely give Kenji an A for effort. The gameplay of D was simple. Despite being set in the first person, you don't actually have full control over Laura. Instead, using the left and right arrows to control where you wanted Laura to go, and push forward to take her on a predetermined path, and use the shoulder buttons to cycle through your inventory. What's even more unconventional is that the game has no save points, no checkpoints, and here's the real kicker, no pausing. So definitely don't play this game on a full bladder. And what's worse, you only have two hours to complete it before it's game over. The character of Laura is presented as a silent protagonist, and character development is kept to a real minimum with only really just some reactions. When it comes to Laura's character, she is about as stoic as her hair. Also, while most of the puzzles are usually find object A and put it into object B, there are one or two puzzles that rely more on luck than anything, and the overall pacing of the game could alienate some players. As well as being a game developer, Kenji was also a renowned electronic composer, having worked on not only his own games, but also others like Sega Rally 2. The music Kenji composed for D, while subtle in its presentation, helped create the dark, brooding atmosphere of the game. Unfortunately, because of its length and its unorthodox design, D doesn't have much replay value, but I'd like to talk more about the man behind D. Interestingly enough, D is one of the most violent games ever released under a teen rating, featuring many things considered taboo in the industry at the time. Things if I discussed would seriously spoil the game. When submitting the game for approval, Kenji submitted a game with no cutscenes whatsoever. After approval was reached, Kenji was late in submitting the master copy for distribution to the US. He did this on purpose, as the penalty for being late 
was having to submit personally. On the plane ride to the US, Kenji would swap the phony clean copy for the real version. For the 3DO, a very special edition of D was created called D's Diner, which was basically a director's cut, featuring numerous never before seen sequences, as well as a mini disc featuring musical recordings from the game. It's almost as sought after as copies of D on the PlayStation. Ah yes, let's talk about Sony. Originally, demand for the game requested upwards of 100,000 copies. However, in an interview, Kenji stated that Sony put more priority on other titles, and in the end, only manufactured 28,000 copies, less than a third of its demand. Kenji was incredibly pissed off, and in a true act of defiance at a Sony press event, Kenji would show footage for his next game, Enemy Zero. After a minute or so of gameplay, the trailer then proudly showed the PlayStation logo. Then, in what could have been considered the biggest suck it Sony had dealt with since the 1991 CES, the PlayStation logo would then morph into the Sega San logo. Kenji decided to make Enemy Zero an exclusive to Sega Saturn, and would never work with Sony again. During the same time, Kenji and his team at Warp were also developing a sequel to D called D2 for the upcoming Panasonic N2, a successor to their 3DO. The sequel would have focused on Laura's teenage son. However, due to the 3DO's failure and the success of the PlayStation, the M2 was scrapped, and D2 for the M2 was also scrapped. 2. According to Kenji Eno, the M2 had been released would have been two to three times more powerful than the N64. <laughs> but this meant also clear that the Saturn and PlayStation were very similar consoles to develop for. <laughs> yeah, right. D2 would be rewritten from the ground up instead for the Sega Dreamcast, and released in Japan at the end of 1999. And afterwards, Kenji basically retired from developing and disbanded Warp. However, he would return to gaming with a new company, FYTO, from yellow to orange, and their first game would be You, Me, and the Cubes Made for WiiWare. It would be the last game Kenji would ever develop. It's safe to say Kenji was probably one of the most unique developers ever to exist in history. His games and actions no doubt influenced other auto developers like Swery and Sur51. In 1997, he would create probably the most unique title ever. Real Sound, Kaza No Regret for the Saturn, and then later for the Dreamcast. An audio novel style game designed for the blind. Also while running Warp, Kenji would hire a young designer by the name of Fumito Ueda who worked on Enemy Zero. Fumito would eventually get his foot into the door at Sony's Japan Studios, where he would form Team Ico. Kenji Eno was a man who made the games that he wanted to make. Whether that was his success or downfall, I'll leave that to you. But know that whatever he made left a lasting impression on anyone who played it. He will be missed.